it is none other than Ron McLean. Ron, are you there? Yes. Uh, hello, Matthew. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, no, you're welcome. I'm glad uh, to be of uh, help. Uh, Ron, obviously you spent some time today with uh, with some of the players. Uh, what was that like for you, and, and what did you think of the morning? Well, it was great. Uh, really well attended by the by the community, and and um, it was always good to see guys that used to play here. They're, they're always such a fun bunch, a lot of laughs, and uh, and very. I haven't seen some of them in in over ten years, so it was very uh, enjoyable for me. Who are some of the players? Maybe the ones in attendance, the ones not in attendance, associated with the nineteen ninety four team that uh, maybe have a, a softer spot in your heart than than uh, others. Well, the ones that were here, um, of the ones here, I was closer probably to Rondell White than any of them, um, and uh, he, he's always been one of my favorite people, and not just as a baseball player, as a person. Um, Larry Walker uh, was, was great, you know, he he was fun guy to be around all the time, funny, kept everybody loose, and um, Jeff Vicero was uh, was an interesting guy, he Spent a lot of time in the minor leagues and was a very humble person and, and uh, was given an opportunity here in Montreal and, and did quite well and probably got him 10 more years in the big leagues. And um, I was really always a favorite of uh, Darren Fletcher, the catcher. He's an Illinois guy and I'm a Midwestern guy myself from Indiana, so we, we kind of had a lot in common the way we view life, I guess. And uh, and he he was coming to this, but something came up and he was unable to attend. But he he was a really good guy. And, you know, the one that was here that had a major uh, injury, probably the worst injury I, I had in my 25 years with uh, Montreal was Cliff Floyd. He overcome a fractured wrist and uh, hand that uh, was in 13 pieces. And Dr. Jorge Schwartz and, and Dr. Larry Coglin here in Montreal operated on him, and they commented that it was like uh, Humpty Dumpty, and they just hoped it worked well. Well, he went on to make about $50 million more million, so I think it worked. Chatting with uh, Ron McLean, former trainer of the Montreal Expo, spent uh, 25 years with the organization. Uh, Matthew Ross, Dave Kaufman in a conversation. Uh, Dave? Yeah, uh, Ron, I wanted to ask you about the uh, how it, how you felt when Andre Dawson said those kind words about you in Cooperstown last summer? Well, it was very moving. I didn't know he was going to do that. I was in the audience, and uh, it was I had a friend of mine with me, and, and we were just awestruck that he, he thought of us like that. And and uh, I was impressed. He, he mentioned all the three trainers he had, and, and I thought that was classy. And, and uh, you know, he, was, he spent a lot of time in the training room and with the doctors, and all. he had several injuries, and... And he really shows that he really appreciated the help we gave him. And, and uh, you know, uh, funny about Andre, he's known for his injuries, his bad knees and so forth, but he was only on the disabled list once in his whole career. Wow, that's incredible. It is incredible. What a great guy he is, too. Ron, in terms of the actual uh, teams, uh, competitive seasons, non-competitive seasons, um, was there more of a was there a pattern where players wanted to stay in the lineup more so when the when something was on the line? In other words, when they were competitive, it, was that the case? Well, generally, yeah, that's true. Uh, I mean, if it came into maybe in, in August or September and we were fifteen or twenty games back, which happened on a couple of years, um, some guys wanted to relax a little bit. A few of them wanted to rest for winter ball because they knew they would be counted on down there in the uh, Latin countries. But uh, generally, that that didn't occur very often. Um, most of them were young enough that they were trying to build their careers and build a name for themselves. And we didn't have the superstars that wanted to sit on a 300 average or anything like that. So that some teams run into. But um, most of our guys were always so young and trying to do better and, you know, earn more and so forth that they were always wanted on the field. 
Hey, Ron, we were debating here in studio, uh, staunch Expo fans. We remember a lot of the good times, the bad times, all that kind of stuff. But uh, you were a guy, obviously, that was always seen on camera when they panned to the dugout, that sort of thing, never really in the limelight. But uh, I, I kind of remember something to do with you where you were perhaps thrown out of a game. Uh, what, 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 what happened there? I, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> search the memory bank. I remember you being uh, arguing perhaps with an umpire or something. <laughs> Yes, that was uh, 1997. Uh, we were in uh, in um, New York, and it was a Sunday afternoon. And um, it was a game. We were down by one run in the eighth inning, I think it was. And uh, the tying run came around to score as David Segui, and the catcher uh, didn't pick up the ball, but he tagged the runner anyway. But the ball was laying on the ground, and the umpire called him out and uh, everybody could see that the ball was on the ground except him and certainly the other umpires knew about it but at at that time in 1997 the umpires had an, an agreement I guess among themselves that that you don't you don't uh, unless an umpire asks for help on a play you don't voluntarily give it now since that time that that rule has been changed but at that time, if if the home plate umpire didn't say to one of his colleagues, "Could you give me an opinion on that? Did he really have the ball?" Unless he asked that, he he. So so the call stood, and uh, and we flipped out, and especially me because because that to me was really just being dishonest. Because the other three umpires were telling him that if he asks me, I can give him my opinion, but he hasn't asked me. You know, like that. He's telling us. And we're and Felipe's about ready to get thrown out, and Mike Lansing got thrown out, and Segui got thrown out, and so I just lost it. <laughs> first time ever, and only time ever thrown out of a game. And I think I was his first or second trainer to ever be thrown out. But wow! But um, Harry Wendelstadt was, of course, the the premier umpire, and he was on second base, and he was the one who was saying, "Unless he asks me, I can't give him help," you know, so that the guy could hear. And he still didn't have it. <laughs> so we, we, we just lost it. You know? so, so never suspended then, Ron? Well, actually, due to that, I did get suspended. Ah, there you go. So there's the tie-in. Uh, we were having the argument here. I said, I remember him being thrown out of the game. Our producer, Dave Simon, said, I remember him being suspended, but I don't remember for what. Yeah, Bang, same was, incident. Yeah, there was only 10 days left in the season. They suspended me for the last 10 days. There you go, Dave. That was an important game to us. Um, I think we were trying to not lose a hundred, and we didn't. We've never lost a hundred, well, I was there at least, and he, um, and and uh, we came close a few times, but but uh, you know it was, it was an important game. It was an RBI and a run scored. I mean, there a lot of statistics going to baseball, and uh, it just uh, it was just a bad call. And that umpire, by the way, was fired the next year. Oh, there you go. So you, you made a difference then. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> We're chatting with Ron McLean, former uh, trainer with the Montreal uh, Expos. He was in town for the 7th Annual Cummings Jewish Center for Seniors Sports Celebrity Breakfast, along with several uh, former Montreal Expos that were there. Ron, were you at the game last night uh, where a uh, bunch of these guys were uh, given a nice ovation in the uh, box for the yes, game? Yes, I was. I was up in the box. And it was a great, great suite and great facility. And- we had we had a real enjoyable time and uh, and it was a very good uh, ovation. Everybody really loves the Expos in Montreal. Any of the uh, players or yourself, perhaps, did you comment on the uh, the Expos banner hanging at the uh, Bell Center? I did not hear anything about that. I have to have to say I didn't I didn't notice that. No. It's uh, it's game points here on the team nine nine. You're just winding down with Ron McLean. Uh, so, uh, what are the plans, Ron? I, I understand you have a, a function this evening, but uh, uh, are you in town long? Are you out quick? No, I'm in all week. Um, I visit uh, Dr. Larry Coglin on the West Island, and and um, yeah, he was uh, always been a close friend of mine. And and I see my accountant while I'm up here, and and we we just do some business while while I'm here. I I see some friends and uh, just enjoy Montreal. Anything you want to say to the uh, fans that uh, still miss baseball up here? 
Well, we all hated to leave here, you know, and I I, I refused to go to Washington, and, and I just retired after the 04 season rather than go. And, and I didn't want to go join the guys in Florida when they left in 02. And so uh, Montreal was, was a second home to me and certainly miss it. My wife misses it, and, and we loved it here. And uh, hopefully they talk today like uh, there's a possibility – in the in the future of maybe bringing another team here, or at least a minor league team, the largest city in uh, North America without a baseball team. So uh, that's something to think about. Ron, we uh, we really thank uh, you for taking some time this evening. Appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of uh, your time in Montreal. Hope the weather warms up for you and a uh, very safe trip back down south. I right, appreciate that, and it's been my pleasure.